Now I want to talk about three different types of church planters. And uh, in other words, three very, very different approaches to the way people go about planting churches. We'll talk a lot about different methods of planting churches, but I want to talk about the approach that a church planter takes and how these are very different. And uh, the three types of church planters are the pastoral church planter, and that is a person who basically does what most church planters have done. They go and sort of pastor the church they plant. Uh, there's the apostolic church planter. This is a person who does more like the Apostle Paul, goes from place to place and plants churches. And then there's the catalytic church planter. And this is a church planter who may stay in one church till that church grows and then start a lot of other churches through a strong central church. Now each of these requires sort of some different gifts of the person and a very, very different approach to the way you go about doing ministry. And that is something we're going to be watching through the rest of this course. And so let me explain a little bit more carefully about these three different types of church planters. First of all, the plant pastoral church planter. Now, I would guess that probably 90%, um, 80 to 90 percent of all churches were planted in this way. So this is where the church planter is, is uh, basically pastors that new church. Goes in, does the preaching, the teaching, the counseling, the organizing, uh, is the leader of that church. And usually that church planter, if it's, a, if it's a missionary, especially a foreign missionary, will sort of stay in that church and pastor it, doing all the leadership, until the church is big enough that it can pay a, a national pastor to come and replace the missionary. Say, well, we've got enough money, and here we have a trained person. That person can come, and now the missionary can move on. Um, or if it's a national, sometimes the person will just stay, and then he'll no longer be a church plan. He just stays on and pastors that church for the next 5, 10, however many years, and continues to just pastor it. Now, the strength of this approach is that the pastoral church planner is usually trained as a pastor. And so that person has, you know, certain ability to teach, has good Bible knowledge, probably has some kind of ministry experience, pastoral experience as a strong Christian. The weakness is this approach rarely leads to church multiplication. And the reason is that you've set up a model for ministry that's very difficult to reproduce. In fact, what ends up happening is very often that missionary church planner says, well, we hope to plant this church within three or four years. We'll move on. There'll be a Russian pastor or a Polish pastor, whatever. And we'll move on. We'll plant another church. But what very often happens is after five years, church is still very small. Everything is being still done by that missionary. And after 10 years, church is a little bit bigger, but it's still just not ever getting anywhere. And sometimes people will stay in a church like this for 20 years, and it's still just a little struggling church, and the missionary is doing all the ministry. And they never really get to that point to where they're growing, to where they're reproducing, to where new churches are being planted. Now, I know what it's like to plant a church in a difficult place where people are not very responsive. And uh, that can happen where people are just not responding to the gospel. But sometimes the way in which we go about planting a church becomes a hindrance. And so this is the pastoral church planter, which usually works well where people are responsive to the gospel, so the church is growing. And it usually works well where the people are relatively affluent, that they have enough money to be able to donate to pay for a professional pastor. You see, if the, peop if the church is growing too slowly, then they're not going to have a big enough budget. If the people are too poor and they can't, don't have enough expendable income to be able to donate, they're not going to have money, enough money to pay a pastor. And so the church is going to just continue to be struggle and be small and probably have a missionary who has a pastor. But you've created a situation where it's very difficult for the missionary to leave. Because if that person leaves, 
there's a vacuum. Who's going to lead the church? They look at each other. Who's going to lead the church? So you've created a situation that's very dependent on professional leaders. So what are you going to do if A, the people are too poor to pay for a professional, or the church is too small to pay for a professional, or there just aren't very many trained pastors around? Then what? Then you've got a problem. And so this works well in many situations, especially in places like North America, where churches grow rapidly, where there's a lot of trained people, where people have money to donate. But in many parts of the world, it does not work very well. But we've tried to do that everywhere. And it just is frustrating. A second type of church planter is the catalytic church planter. Now, the catalytic church planter, that person plants a church, stays with that church, and grows it, and it becomes a strong mother church that then plants daughter churches. And maybe every year or two, it's planting another church there. It's sending out more people there. It's sending out people there. And so this is why we call it catalytic. Because that church planter, now he doesn't go and plant the other churches, but he's sending out people to plant churches all the time. And an example of this would be, you've probably heard of Rick Warren. Everybody's heard of Rick Warren, Purpose Driven Life, Purpose Driven Church. Um, in the first, I think in the first 10 years, uh, I have the exact numbers in this book, first 10 years I think they planted something like 16 daughter churches. I mean, this, he stayed in one church, built one strong church, and that church just kept planting other churches. Bob Roberts, another pastor in Texas, they claim to have started 100 churches. They're not all in Texas, but sending out people overseas in their local areas. And so the strength of this is it can lead to the reproducing of churches. There's a high public profile. Usually that mother church is a strong church. They've got a building. They've got established ministries, credibility. And so when they plant churches, there's a sense of, there's resources there. There's a sense of movement. The downside of this, most church planters are not that gifted <laughs> to be able to plant that kind of a church. And I've done this, this teaching many times and often with a group of church planters. And I'll, I haven't explained to you the, the apostolic one yet. But we'll be, uh, I'll, I'll present these three and then people say, I want to be catalytic. I want to be, I want to plant the big church that's going to be the big church in town and we're just going to plant all kinds of churches all around. I say, well, let's come back and take a look five years from now, see what you did. The reality is you don't choose to be this kind of a church planner. God chooses you to be that kind of church planner because most people are not that gifted. Five years later, they still got a little church with 50 people. Oh, they wanted to have that big church that's going to be planning all these churches, but they still got this little church with 50 people and they're just trying to pay their bills. And so I say, you know, if God gives you that exceptional spirit, gifting like a Rick Warren or Bob Roberts or some of these people, God bless you. Do that by all means. It's especially effective in large urban areas. It's not as effective in rural areas because you don't usually get big churches in rural areas. God's gifted you to, to be able to do that. That's wonderful. Reality is most of us just aren't that gifted. That was one of the problems with a lot of the research that was done about church growth back in the 1970s and 60s. Um, you know, researchers would go and look at a church that had 10,000 members, say, you know, what are they doing? And, uh, well, the problem was most of those super churches had super pastors. <laughs> and an average pastor could do everything that super pastor was doing, but he just was not that gifted. They're exceptional. And so, so this is a wonderful way to plant churches, and if God has opened that up to you, it's, it's a great thing to see happen. Um, but it is more of an exceptional situation. So for most people, it's not realistic to think they will end up, in the end of the day, being pastoral church planters. 
We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world depends on all of us. We very much need and appreciate your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.